Hello, and welcome to another Children's Moment with me, Pastor Carson. It's so good to see you. You know, not everyone's going to understand you in life. It's true. Not everyone's going to look at you and say, hey, I understand everything about that person. I know just who they are. I know everything they're thinking. I know exactly what you want and what you're going to do to later today and what you've already done. No, no one knows things like that except for God. God knows us inside and out. And we try our best and we can look well on others and we can say, when I see someone, I can see that they are a child of God, that they've been made by God. They, they bear the image of God, which means they're special. If someone's alive, it means they're special. If someone's living and breathing and walking and I can see them and they can see me, it means it's someone that I can see well. It means it's someone that I can love. But it's true. Not everyone's gonna totally understand you and understand your faith. Not everyone will understand your hope. Not everyone will understand your love. Our scripture today comes from the book of Acts. And it's about a bunch of people that didn't understand the love that Peter and John are going to be telling people. They're telling people about the love of Jesus and how it's changed them and how it's made them into new people. They're doing different things. They're going to love differently. And it shows how a lot of the leaders and other people didn't understand that. So will you read the word with me today? And let's hear this. This comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4. And we're going to look at verses 1 through 12 and perhaps even beyond that. Because it's the whole story. Hope you can read along with your Bible, Acts chapter 4, starting with verse 1. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. And they were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John. And because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. And they had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them, by what power or what name did you do this? And then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness, shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which one must be saved. Mm. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm gonna carry this story a little bit further because if you still have your Bibles open, verse 13, says, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, just ordinary people, they were astonished 
And they took note of these men and had, that had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin. And they all talked together. And when they were going, what are we going to do with these men, they all asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they have performed a notable sign. And we cannot deny it. But if but to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name, the name of Jesus. And when they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus, but Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes? To listen to you? or to God. You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Hmm. Well, after further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old still the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. This is an interesting story. I appreciate you going all the way through that scripture with me because there's, there's a lot here and we can see the bravery, the courage, it says in verse 13 of Peter and John. The Sanhedrin is a group of high priests. It's like a, a big community where all the leaders would join together. Um, and they're all meeting and talking together about what to do and how to handle this situation about Jesus. And these apostles have seen Jesus raised from the dead. The resurrection has a, a new body and met with the apostles. And so there's a whole new life here. And the apostles know that there's hope and life in Jesus and they've got a story to tell. They've got, they've got a story to tell. And when they go out and they start telling that story, they're starting to realize that not everyone understands. That not, not everyone um, sees things the same way that they do. That not everyone believes that Jesus has been raised from the dead. That not everyone uh, can understand that that is possible. And certainly if it's not just that it's possible, but that you're gonna go around and spread that message, that message is different than what the people that were leaders were trying to say, which is our hope comes from God and it would be impossible for Jesus to raise from the dead. It would be impossible. That is, and to hear such nonsense would not be faithful. Ooh, well, that makes for quite a difficult problem because Peter, John, the other apostles that were with Jesus, they saw Jesus. They know that Jesus lived. They know that Jesus has come back to life. And they know that there is a power in the name of Jesus. And so that's really what's kind of going on here is um, it's a problem for, for the leaders that don't really believe that. They don't trust that. They don't understand that. They don't understand the hope and this life that's in Peter and in John. Hmm. Have you ever felt like people maybe don't understand you? Have you ever felt like you following Jesus and you say, oh, Jesus makes me feel like I need to love everybody. It helps me to, to see people differently, to see people as Jesus sees me. 
to love people differently, to love people like Jesus loves me. But what if someone were to tell you, hey, that person over there, they're not worth it. You can't love a person like that. They're hopeless. Do you hear that and say, oh, well, I, I guess you're right. Or do you remember what Jesus says? No. No, people are not hopeless. People are not worthless. There's always hope. And there's always worth in the eyes of Jesus. So we see people that way too. <laughs> yeah. See, it's different. It's different. And when, when someone might say something like that, there's going to be a bit of a problem. Because they both don't see people the same way. Hmm. Well, how will this work out? How does Jesus show what love really looks like? How does Jesus show us faith? And if you look at Peter and John, they are changed by Jesus. They know what it means to love people, to share their possessions, to share and join in a community, and what it means to love whether someone looks like you or not, comes from your same nation or not. This, this group of people is changing the world by how they're seeing one another. And now the leaders, they're not quite sure what to make of this new group of people because it, it doesn't fit everything that they had seen before so easily. Hmm. But Jesus is coming and the Holy Spirit is showing new life and it gives bravery when we need to speak up about something. It, it gives a life where there's defeat and brokenness. It, it gives hope where people are feeling hopeless, either about themselves or writing off other people and saying, oh, they're all hopeless. It, it, it gives word to that. It says, no, no, they're not hopeless. No, no, people do have value. No, we won't just follow the same old thing. We'll, we'll speak a word to that. We'll share about how people have immense value in the eyes of God. Because we're Christians, which means we walk like Christ. We try our best to love the way Jesus loves us and forgive the way Jesus has forgiven us. Because we don't, we're not going to get it right all the time. In fact, we don't, but thanks be to God, we can be forgiven for that. And we can try our best again and again each new day to love as Jesus loves us, amen. So I pray that you today, just like Peter and John, that you'll have a boldness, a confidence, and a joy to let people know about Jesus and the love that Jesus has for people. Will you pray with me? God, we're so thankful for you that you do not give up on us, that you have hope in us just as we have hope in you and we never give up on you. We trust that you, God, are always doing a good work, showing people what life is all about and what love is all about, and what forgiveness and change is really all about. So will you help us to see each other the way you see us, and to love each other the way you love us? In your holy and precious name we pray, amen. In the name of God, the Father, Jesus the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. See you next time.